going to throw some stats at you now. This will be fun. And not like literally. Oh, um, right. Yeah, let's, let's have a look at this then, because uh, this is quite interesting. These are the percentage wins for home nations against rugby championship sides, OK? Um, and Ireland, home nations and Ireland. So this is 2016, OK? So the home nations and Ireland win 60% of the games. Um, and then in 2017, we win 75% of the games and this is 2018 so uh, that's currently right but if if the home nations and ireland win all three matches um this weekend it goes up to 87 percent so i think what we're kind of seeing is that that gap is is getting smaller correct Lima? yeah it is certainly why um, well you've got to look at all the top teams and and I think it starts at the top with their coaches. You know, like you look at Ireland, who who are their coach, who's their head coach. You look at England. You look at um, Wales. You look at Scotland. The common denominators, the head coaches, are all from the Southern Hemisphere. So maybe a little bit of that imprint is starting to make its way to to the Northern Hemisphere, and it, yeah. and it can only be good for rugby. Ben, what's your take on it? Uh, I think. The, the stats go up and down and occasionally you know, they are, the Southern Hemisphere tends to be further ahead, ahead that, than we are uh, but occasionally that gap narrows and then it, it, it grows again but I wouldn't say unless you see that consistent trend over a number of years you haven't caught them up and, and um, yeah, there, was, there was a time where the Northern Hemisphere had done uh, it, it grew again and now it's sort of it's starting to shrink to shrink down and at perfect timing for the World Cup you know I think a year ago everyone would have said well shut the door and, and I think one of the uh, one of the journalists in New Zealand actually put, put a, wrote an article in the New Zealand Herald saying you might as well just give us the World Cup now I don't <laughs> think he's quite as confident I know it was said tongue in cheek but I don't think they're quite as confident uh, so it's perfect timing that that, that gap is starting to come back Absolutely. And Wales, of course, they face South Africa um, this weekend. If Wales win this weekend, it will be their first ever autumn clean sweep, if you like. I mean, I mean, psychologically, um, like, like the other home nations, that, that breeds confidence, doesn't it? <laughs> Come on, Wales. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it does breed confidence. Look, I've it? said Especially for a while, I think Wales are a really good bet when you get to Japan. I think they've got, they're going to have a lot of caps when they get there. They've got uh, an experienced pack. Their back line know each other, they've played with each other a lot, and that counts for a huge amount. You contrast that with England, and we don't really know what our team's going to look like by the time we get there, and that we're only, what, nine months away now. But you've got now. strength in depth. We have you? got strength in depth, but the same for Wales. I think you look outside of that starting back row, they've got some brilliant players. Mm -hmm. 